if I have a bunch of strings that I want to store in one of these hashes, what I need to do is I need to convert this string to a number. Right? And it has to be an integer. The reason it has to be an integer is because I want to stick it in an array. The way I stick it in an array, if I've got an integer, I can just access that part of the array. What happens if I run this code? I'm going to get a char is s dot character at position 5. And I'm just going to print that character, OK? What's that going to print out? It's not a complex question. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's make it a more complex question. Six. It's going to print out the M, right? What happens if I say int i s dot char at 6? Now I try and print out this integer. Is that even going to compile? Is that even going to compile? Who thinks it's going to compile? Who thinks it's not going to compile? Who's not sure? So it is going to compile because this method is overloaded, and there's a version of this method that returns an integer. So what integer would you return associated with the character m? The ASCII value, brilliant. The ASCII value. In fact, nowadays we return the Unicode value. So back in the old days, it's a sign of age, I'm afraid, there was the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It became Unicode. And every character is represented by a number. ASCII has 0 through 255. It includes all of the letters, all of the numbers, but it also includes like backspace, tab, delete, etc. But it only includes the normal characters that we use in the English alphabet. The French got all upset and said, wait a second, there's no accents. We've got to add that. The Russians got all upset and said, there's no Cyrillic letters. We've got to add that. I, I don't think anybody really got upset. But the result is that we went from ASCII, we went to Unicode. right? And Unicode has a single number that represents every character, including all of the Asian characters, all of the um, normal English characters in the English alphabet. But it also includes things like emoji and all of those other things that you guys text around all the time. Even the little beer emojis. And so in Unicode, the digits, so 0 through 9, are represented by the numbers 48 to 57. In Unicode, capital letters A through Z, capital, are represented by the numbers 65 through 90. And the lowercase letters A through Z, lowercase, are represented by the numbers 97 through 122. Okay. So in fact, when you ask it to print out the character at position 6 as an integer, it, Java will print out 109, which is the representation of an M in Unicode. So if I wanted to come up with a hash function for a string, one of the ways that I could do it is I could take the string. So here's a simple string. And I could convert 
that string into Unicode characters. So T is 116, H is 104, I is 105, and S is 115. So I could take that string, I could add it up, that comes to 440, okay? And so now I could put that string into my array as my key. But what happens if I had this string? What would the sum of the Unicode values be? And what about if I had Tish? What would the sum of the Unicode values be? And what about if I had... No. So I get lots of collisions, right? Because every string is giving me the same answer. So just adding up the numbers isn't the best way to create integer representation of the string. So what I want to do to separate things is perhaps include some notion of where the letter is in the string itself. And so the, one of the ways that I could do that is multiply this by some constant raised to the power of the position of the letter in the string. So t 116 times g raised to the power 0, 104 times g raised to the power 1, 105 times g raised to the power 2, 115 times g raised to the power 3. Okay? And now, my number, my integer that I'm going to return is actually affected by the position of the letters in the string. And so I'm going to get a different answer for this, and hits, and tish, and so on. And in fact, I can just write that equation as 116 plus g times 104 plus g times 105 plus g times 115 plus G. Okay. So my hash code function for a string might look something like this. I'm going to take a string. I'm going to set my constant, which I'm going to call g, to 31. It's a particular reason why it's 31. Let's see if you guys can think about that. I'm going to initiate a variable for what I'm going to return. I'm going to call that hash. And now I'm just going to go through every letter in the string And I'm just going to multiply my existing, uh, actually, sorry, g times hash plus s dot car up. Hash. 
So now I've got a function where I can take any string and I can con calculate an integer based on that string. And if I give it permutations of the same string, like this and tish and hits and so on, I get different answers back. Okay. So this hash function here is going to give me a different answer based on the permutation of the string. It's going to try and minimize collisions. And it's fast to calculate. The complexity of calculating this is just based on the length of the string. If I had a lot of data, or like we do when we do um, bioinformatics analysis, where we have very long data, we can just take a substring and use that to calculate it. We don't have to calculate it on the whole thing. 